welcome to Draw and Tell Stories today. I am here by myself today. My colleague Jody will be joining me in a bit, but until she does, I'm going to take my mask off so you can hear me a little bit better. I am here today in Saskatoon, which is on Treaty 6 land, traditional homeland of the Métis. And at this time of year, Saskatoon is a very snowy city. And so today, Jody and I would each like to share with you a wintry story time that's also a draw and tell. So we will be adding to our scene that Jody's daughters did for us. It's an amazing winter scene. Um, so thanks to Rebecca and Olivia who drew this awesome scene. What do you see out your windows when you look out your window? Do you see a wintry scene like this? Maybe there are trees with snow on them. Maybe you see the sunshine out today or clouds in the sky. It looks like it's a windy day here in this scene. Maybe you see a little park bench with skates and a hockey stick. And I'm not sure if you can see this because they're very tiny, but there are even some cookies and a hot cocoa on this bench. And one of the cookies is half eaten. I love chocolate chip cookies. So we're going to add two stories today to this wintry scene, and I hope that you enjoy them. Today, I would like to tell you the story of The Curious Little Mouse by Heidi Butkus. And it goes like this. There was a curious little mouse who lived in a mouse hole. Now, this little mouse had never, ever, ever left its mouse hole. And it was curious, but this mouse was not very brave. But as it got older, it got a little bit braver. And one day, Little Mouse decided that it was going to leave the mouse hole. But it wasn't going to go very far because there was a cat that lived in this house. And so it would just leave the mouse hole and maybe just make a quick loop around the room right close by. So, Little Mouse crept tippy-toe, tippy-toe along the wall and then made one quick loop all the way around and back to the mouse hole. It made it and it didn't even see the cat. And you know, have you ever tried something that made you a little bit nervous and then once you did it and you had fun doing it and everything was great that you were a little braver to try more things? Well, Little Mouse, because this journey went really well, became a little bit braver and decided to maybe do another trip out of the mouse hole. But this time, Little Mouse was going to go a little farther. Now, there was also a little dog who lived in this house named Buster. And Buster liked to play with mice just for fun. And so Little Mouse knew it had to be super, super careful because one time its brother had gone out of the mouse hole and was checking out things and running around the house and it got its tail caught in Buster's teeth and mother was furious. Little Mouse did not want to get its tail caught in Buster's teeth. So it was very careful. So Little Mouse left the mouse hole and crept tippy-toe, tippy-toe along the wall. And it crept tippy-toe, tippy-toe along the wall of the room it had gone around before. And then it went just a little bit farther out into the next room. Oh, it saw so many cool things it had never seen before. And then it decided it better get home quick. So it quickly went all the way around the wall of the first room and back to the mouse hole. Whew, it made it, safe and sound. Didn't even see Buster or the cat. Little Mouse was feeling very, very brave now and decided the next time it would go outside. Little Mouse had never ever been outside. Like never ever. It had only seen outside from the window. It had never caught snowflakes on its tongue or made fresh tracks in the snow with its boots or made a snow person or made a snow fort or made a snowball and had a snowball fight. None of it. So Little Mouse decided it was time to go outside. So it crept tippy toe, tippy toe out of the mouse hole around the wall of the first room, around the wall of the second room. And then Little Mouse went outside. And Little Mouse saw such cool things. It saw trees like this one covered in sparkly, glittery snow. And it saw rocks, black, glittery, beautiful rocks. And it grabbed a rock for its pocket to bring back for mama and one for each of its brothers. So it had five black glittery rocks in the mouse's pocket. And little mouse kept walking 
and saw some super cool sticks. Have you ever seen really cool sticks? Mouse grabbed two. It had two hands, grabbed two sticks. And little mouse kept walking and walking and walking and collecting treasures as it went. And it wandered this way and that way. And soon little mouse's pockets were full of treasures. And it was getting harder for little mouse to walk because it was getting so heavy with all those stones and treasures and sticks. So little mouse decided that it was probably time to start walking home. And just as it started walking home, guess who came around this corner? As fast as it could, it was Buster the little dog. And so little mouse ran as fast as it could. But as it was running, those five black, shimmery, sparkly stones fell out of little mouse's pockets. It was so sad. But do you know what? It was happy to reach the wall of the first room and get away from Buster. That's where Little Mouse was. And Little Mouse stopped by the wall right here and took a deep breath. Because <gasps> sometimes after you run really hard, you need to take a minute and catch your breath. But just as Little Mouse was catching its breath, guess who came around the other corner? Over here. It was the cat. And so Little Mouse ran all along the wall of the room. But as it was running, it lost one of those awesome cool sticks that it had collected. And Little Mouse was too busy trying to get away from the mouse, so it kept running, running, running all around the room. And when it got to the other side of the room, it accidentally lost that other really cool stick it had collected. And Little Mouse ran around and ran and ran and ran, and it could just see the mouse hole. And it knew that it was so close to home. And the cat reached out with its claws and caught the edge of Little Mouse's pocket with its claw and ripped the pocket right open. And all the rest of Little Mouse's treasures fell out of its pocket. Now Little Mouse was really sad to lose all of its treasures, but it was really, really happy to make it back to the mouse hole. And can you guess who was waiting at the mouse hole for Little Mouse to get there? Mama. And Mama was very, very happy that Little Mouse made it back safely. But she was also a little bit grumpy that Little Mouse had taken such a risk. Sometimes grown-ups feel that way, a little conflicted. And she said to Little Mouse, don't you ever go outside again without your scarf. And this is what Little Mouse's scarf looked like. Do you have a scarf? Do you have to wear a scarf outside? What color is your scarf? Is it red or orange or blue? Little Mouse's scarf was white, just like the snow. And Mama said, and don't you ever go outside without your hat. And this is what Little Mouse's hat looked like. Kind of like a top hat. I don't know that that would keep you very warm, unless maybe it had ear flaps. And Little Mouse said, Mama, I had the best day, except for getting chased by the dog and the cat. But I made something when I was outside today. Do you want to see? And Mama said, of course I want to see. And so they went to the window and they looked outside. And what do you think they saw? A snow person! Little Mouse had made a snow person when it was outside. I hope that you have lots of fun this winter making snow people and snow forts and having snowball fights and catching snowflakes on your tongue. And now Jody's coming to share another wintry tale with you. Hi everybody! It's Jody from the Saskatoon Public Library and I'm all alone in the story room today so I'm going to take off my mask so you can see my smile while I tell you the second half of a draw and tell story. Do you remember last time, Dawn introduced our winter scene by Rebecca and Olivia. Thank you girls. And they did a great job of setting the scene for our two winter stories. The Curious Little Mouse, where Dawn drew a snow person. And then I'm going to do story number two. Enjoy. So when we're looking at our scene today, the first thing I notice is that the moon has come out. So it's nighttime in my story. So when the moon is out, sometimes it's really dark, but sometimes it's a full moon like this one, and then it's a little bit brighter. And when there's snow on the ground, and the moon is out, everything looks sparkly. 
So that's where we're starting our story today. So my story is called The Sheltering Tree. And I want to give credit to Linda Muse from a blog called Notes from the Story Room because she made this story up. The Sheltering Tree. It was winter in the forest. It was very quiet as it was late at night. The moon was very full and round. There were trees all around, trees all around. And in the distance, there was a snow person glinting in the moonlight. And in the middle of that beautiful forest, in the middle of the night, a little fir tree stood. Although it was not very big, it stood out because the tree's needles were thick and full. It was a very big tree. Draw the trunk and there's my tree. The wind was blowing very hard, whoosh, whoosh, that night. But the little fir knew that it had to stand firm in the wind because it had a very important job to do. The night began to get colder and it started to snow. The snow drifted and started to cover the little tree's branches. Snow there, and snow there, and snow. But the tree stood tall and strong and did not bend under the weight of the snow. Snow here. It looks like a snowy night. Soon the snow stopped falling and the stars came out in the sky one by one, twinkling in the moonlight. You can do stars however you can have lots of stars. I like seeing stars whenever I'm up past dark. And all of a sudden, a large star appeared over the tree, bathing it in light. This night, the bright star chose to shine on this little fir tree in the forest because the tree brought to life the spirit of the season, caring for others. And beneath its sheltering branches slept several forest animals protected by the little fir tree on this sparkly, snowy night. all the animals. We've got an owl and a fox and a little hedgehog, maybe a porcupine. And over here, a squirrel and two lovebirds. 
and a little rabbit. <gasps> and we woke them up. Let's put them back to sleep and say, shh, good night. Sleep well in your sheltering tree on a cold winter's night. So this little fir tree has an important job to do. He has to shelter all of these animals, especially in the winter when it's cold and animals are looking for somewhere to be, to stay safe from the cold. Thanks so much for joining Dawn and I for our draw and tell stories today, The Curious Little Mouse and The Sheltering Tree. We had a really great time telling you these stories and hopefully you go home and practice them so that you can tell them to someone else. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.